All right, good morning, everybody. We are back in module three, starting on page 74 today with uh, elements. Let's get started. Elements in your book it says they are the basic building blocks. Elements are the basic building blocks of matter. Basic building blocks of matter. And I will give you another definition as well. An element is any substance that cannot be, any substance that cannot be decomposed We'll talk about what that means in just a minute. Into a less massive. Any substance that cannot be decomposed into less massive, in other words, smaller substances. Okay, indeed, what does that mean? Well, if you remember Lavoisier, he came up with the law of conservation of mass. And when scientists began investigating this further and testing the theory, they found out something really interesting. They found out that some substances, and we'll call it form A, okay, could change into two smaller forms, or maybe even three smaller forms. So they would start with a substance that was, say, this large, and they would end up with two smaller substances. Your book calls them less massive substances. And when this happened, when you start with a larger form and end up with two smaller forms, two or more smaller forms, that's called decomposition. It's a type of chemical change or chemical reaction. We're gonna write that definition down as well. Decomposition. Decomposition is the change when a substance the change when a substance is broken down the change when a substance is broken down into smaller substances That is called decomposition. Okay, so like yesterday, when I showed you the fire happening in my uh, fireplace over there, we saw the decomposition happen of some cardboard and a couple sticks and some paper. It was decomposing into carbon dioxide, water, and ash. So when scientists continued with these decomposition experiments, they found that some substances could not be broken down any further. And that is when they named those substances elements. So elements are substances that cannot be broken down any further. They are the substances in their purest form and they represent the building blocks of all matter because you put these elements together and form different compounds and that is what is making up our world today. Everything that you look at in your world is made up of elements. Elements, we're gonna go back to elements. The substances that could not be broken down further the substances that could not be broken down further. The most otherwise called the most basic substances and 
like this section in your book says, they are the building blocks of matter. So scientists studied these elements. They figured out the different characteristics of each element. They took some notes, they recorded their data, uh, they figured out the different properties and they came up with, can I get a drum roll please? The beloved periodic table of elements. Let's have a moment of silence. Oh, thank goodness they put this together. They organized the elements to make sense, and we are going to be referring back to this beloved periodic table of elements so many times this year. So I hope that you get to know it well and that you appreciate the benefits that these scientists that these scientists put together for us in reading and understanding this table. The beloved, okay, you're right. Some people don't actually refer to it as the beloved. Sometimes it's just referred to as the periodic table of elements. But that's only when people have limited time. In fact, sometimes people will just refer to it as the periodic chart, or heaven forbid, just the chart. But what can I say? Sometimes on Friday nights when we're gonna have pizza, I don't have time to say pizza. I just call it za. All right, so the beloved periodic table of elements. Uh, this is a scientist's tool. In fact, it is a chemist's most important tool. And let me give you a few notes on the periodic table of elements, okay? If you can look in the front cover of your book, da, 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 right here, you will see it, okay? So you can take a look at that as we're taking a couple notes on it. Uh, each box represents an element. So let's see how many boxes are here. Uh, 100 and... 12 are represented on the chart right now, but you know what? Some of these elements are actually elements that scientists, uh, that don't occur naturally in, uh, on Earth, and scientists have actually created some elements. How did they do that? I do not know, but it's true. Uh, so 92 occur naturally on the Earth. The others have been created. So that's why I say at the moment, the periodic table of elements shows 112, but who knows? Next year they could come up with 113. Each box represents, each box represents an element. And there is a letter in each box. The letter is called the chemical symbol. It is an abbreviation of the name of the element. Now the name of the element could be an English name or it could be a Latin name. So it's not always obvious which letter or in some cases two or three letters um, go with which element. And unfortunately, you do have to memorize a few of them. Uh, but first, let's write down that, uh, let's see, the letter is the chemical symbol which represents or stands for the name of the element. And like I said, it could be in English or it could be in Latin. So hopefully you've been brushing up on your Latin skills. I know some of you actually have. The first letter of the name is capitalized. Oh, just like my name. First letter is capitalized, so that'll be easy to remember. Uh, if they have two or three letters, the second and third letters are not capitalized. And you need to memorize, you will need to know by the end of this module, the first 20 names and symbols.
Okay, you don't have to memorize them in order. You don't have to memorize the numbers that are in these boxes with the elements. You just have to know the names and the symbols for the first 20. It will come in very handy, trust me. Okay, so for example, let's see. I'm just gonna have to squeeze these examples on the side over here. For example, H is the symbol for hydrogen. Okay. H is used from the English name for hydrogen, which is very convenient for us. Uh, sodium, on the other hand, is written as capital N-A, sodium. And so that one comes from the Latin name, which for sodium is natrium. So that's where they get the N-A from for sodium. That is in box number 11. Okay, uh, before we go on, I'm gonna have to erase my board here with my sleeve again. Good thing I always have a sleeve with me. Oh, and it's gonna get messy, but that's okay. Okay, next on the periodic table, while I'm erasing, you can take a look at it and find the jagged line that runs down kind of the middle of the beloved periodic table of elements, okay? There is a jagged line. So this is just continuing notes underneath the beloved periodic table of elements. The jagged line separates metals from non-metals. Jagged line separates metals from non-metals, which is one of the ways this table helps us to help us to keep track of what are metals, what are non-metals. Why is this important? Well, the metals, we know certain properties about metals. Metals are malleable, which means they can be bent, or if you bang them with a hammer, you will dent them. Um, so metals are malleable. Oftentimes they, have, uh, they usually have some sort of luster or shine to them. Um, what else? They conduct electricity. So they're malleable, they have luster, they conduct electricity. And then you guessed it, the non-metals. Oh, also the metals are on the left of this jagged line on the periodic table, okay? And you will see it, this is page 75 of your book. You'll see it right here in this dark bolded black line. So everything to the left, um, these are the metals. The elements to the right are the non-metals. There is one exception, hydrogen, which you'll see in the top left corner. We'll learn why it's in the top left corner later, but hydrogen is not a metal. There's always some sort of exceptions, right? Non-metals would be uh, brittle. So you go to try to bend a non-metal and it's just going to snap. Uh, they lack luster, so they're kind of dull. Have you ever heard a person referred to as lackluster? Oh, sad. Not so sad for non-metals, but sad for people. And then they don't collect, uh, conduct electricity. And these are on the right side, the right-hand side of that jagged line, right? Non-metals and metals. Let's just write down that exception, that exception that we need to know. Hydrogen, we'll use the chemical symbol, is a non-metal, even though it is found on the left of the line. All right, so that's what you need to know about elements and the periodic table.